Yet you're walking them through see your space. This really caught our eye and a lot of people's eye. What exactly are we looking at uh, with this device? So we're looking at a fully amphibious vehicle that swims very effectively at the surface, uh, at depth, but can also transition up onto land and move across sand, so snow, ice, and a lot of other terrestrial uh, environments. And it can move from the land back into the ocean just as easily. And it has a, a very efficient propulsion system that uh, is, makes the vehicle also very maneuverable. So it's a highly maneuverable amphibious vehicle platform. It has stealth characteristics. The, we don't have cavitation and vibration. The fins are very quiet. And it has a super uh, capacity to have a very high uh, efficiency for tow. So its bollard pull is very high, very efficient. And looking at it and looking at the footage, which is absolutely mesmerizing, it looks like something you would see out in nature, like an, like an animal. For me, it looks like, like a stingray. Would that be the inspiration behind it or, or, not, or not so much? It's more a case of convergent evolution, physics being what it is, that in the material world, as opposed to the digital world or the virtual world, that there, when you're dealing with mass and volume and velocity and energy, things tend to take on a similar form. So it ended up looking like a marine creature because we're trying to move through water. Other marine creatures that have this undulating fin cuttlefish, uh, underneath of a knife fish, they aren't able to use those fins to move up onto land. So there are no undulating propulsion systems that are effective on land. This is, but it's, uh, art, it's artificial, it's man-made. So what was the, the need that it's filling for, for mar maritime forces? Well, what were people asking for it to do? So we, we're pretty well covered in space and in the deep ocean and the surface of the oceans and on land with a whole all manner of autonomous systems. But the, where the land and the water meet is a pretty critical zone. Um, it's pretty important in the theater of war. Amphibious landings and, and, and all, all, all kinds of scenarios. Uh, so I think that the Navy is interested in having a presence in the surf zone, uh, which is a chaotic, noisy environment. It's constantly shifting, constantly changing. You can't send a surface unmanned surface vehicle too close to shore. You can't send an unmanned underwater vehicle too close to shore without risking it getting beached. There isn't any other platform that is as multi-domain as this and that can move through as many different environments as this, all using one propulsion system. You can have a vehicle with propellers and wheels and everything else, but it's got one system. Going from the surf to, to the beach, what was one of the biggest challenges uh, and on the engineering side? or? The biggest challenge by far is for the vehicle to hold the weight of the body. So in the water, your weightlessness, all the marine animals that we admire, their grace and their, their elegance and their efficiency in the water, they are, they're hopeless on land, almost all of them. So the, the hardest challenge is dealing with gravity. So it looks like the platform's getting going. What, what, would, what, would it, what would its mission be? Would this be, would we have equipment mounted on top, a payload? Yeah, it's payload agnostic. At the moment, we have cameras front and back. We have lights front and back, top of velocity log, measure, measure, uh, IMUs, uh, and it's fully autonomous. It's ready to go. It's a fully developed autonomy that hasn't yet been through its paces. We are collaborating with MIT uh, on autonomy. We use the Moose IVP um, and Moose IVP Helm autonomy software package. And back here, it looks like we have a smaller version of it. To my eye, what, what are we looking at there? So this is a precursor to Sea Ray. We call this one Velox. Uh, Velox was, the, was, was prototype one. And Velox was a science project, essentially. So with Velox, we established that, yes, you can create effective undulating propulsion. Uh, it is possible. And that it can be a propulsion system that works on land as well as in the water. And with Velox, we also found it to be a very, very efficient ice skating vehicle. So on ice, it moves with almost no friction, just a bit of wind. It, it just glides through the ice consuming very little power. In water, it's very efficient. On land, it doesn't particularly like it, but it, it, it works pretty well on land as well. I mean, if I was a Navy SEAL, I could imagine um, wanting to have one of these as a forward scout before I stick my head above water for an amphibious landing. And it can come up maybe unseen, quietly. It's also very stealthy. Uh, and then be the eyes and ears before the, the SEALs arrive. And then slip back onto the water undetected. Maybe it leaves something on the beach. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.